It's been a while. Um, me and my husband moved. Our family moved from Tennessee all the way down to Georgia. In fact, we moved 10,000 pounds worth of stuff from, oh, about 10,000 pounds from Tennessee to Georgia. So I have to organize my books today. Everything is an absolute incredible mess right now. And I figure I'm gonna get some boxes unpacked and seeing as like half of that 10,000 pounds was my books, I found it only fitting that maybe we should do that. So this is actually my two bedroom bookshelves we're gonna start off with and see how this goes, so. Buckle up. <laughs> So as promised, we're gonna do a little bit of a bookshelf tour. I went ahead and did a time lapse of me putting all these books onto these shelves. And off camera, I organized them a little bit. And I'm gonna show you what they look like. So these are the, the bookshelves in my bedroom. These bookshelves are from a library sale and I absolutely love them. Um, they're some of my favorites. And yeah, I'm just gonna get right into it. So this shelf is for TBR. Red books and my bookmarks. That's all that's on the shelf, all right? Um, this shelf right here is gonna be my rainbow shelf and I'm gonna bring you in closer and I'll show you all the things that are on this one. So, let me see. Okay, so like I said, this one is my rainbow shelf. This is hardback. I take the covers off of them. I have the dust covers in a box. I'm not crazy enough to throw them out but I do like the look of the naked books as far as like rainbow shelves go. Anyways, um, I'll start off with the red. So this is Victorian City by Judith Flanders. I'm not gonna go through every single book in detail. I'm just going to go through some of the ones that I find interesting. This one I highly recommend for anyone who absolutely loves Sherlock. Um, it's a good companion. It's a history book about Victorian ages. Very interesting. Um, kind of gives you a new perspective on the romance of Victorian ages and how it's romanticized. Anyways, Enchante, I have Crescent City, Where Dreams Descend, Wicked Saints. Both of these were really kind of disappointing reads for me. I kind of had hyped them up a little bit more than I thought they were gonna be. On the flip side of that, I have Lovely War. This one is so underrated. I wish more people read these. I think I've said that multiple times now. Um, Becoming Mrs. Lewis, haven't read it yet. Girls of Paper and Fire. Eh. I have a collection of all the Tarzan. I have Empire of Gold, Wanderers, The Kingdom of Copper, The Baron Nightingale, Acid Test, um, The Merciful Crow, Flat, The Flat Share. This was like the first romance book that I read in a very long time. It kind of got me interested, back interested in romance. So love that one. The Pop Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is the only one I have out of the series. I don't know if I'm gonna read more of it. Um, what was it? It was a chapter 72 that was like the really graphic chapter. It just kind of like, kind of made me turn off. I didn't want to read it. <laughs> um, the Chemist by Stephanie Myers. I have a collection of books by Wharton. Imaginary Friend by Stephen Shaposky. I have thoughts about this book as well. Um, loved it until the ending where it got really religious and weird. <laughs> I have Women of the Pleasure Quarters, which is about Gesha. Geishas? Geishas? Um, and then Glenn Beck, Agenda 21, which is like an extreme um, dystopian novel about like the extremities of green thinking. Green thinking is interesting. Um, but yes, this is my rainbow shelf. I am going to move you a little farther down and I have another shelf of hardbacks and they are classics. So let's move you down with this. Okay, so I have a Bible. I have The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien. This is one of my favorite editions. It's a kid's edition. Um, I have A Game of Thrones, their special edition. I have Gone with the Wind, which is another special edition someone sent to me. It was a 
friend of the family and it is really exceptionally gorgeous. I don't like Gone with the Wind though. I can tell you all about that in another <laughs> rant vlog. Yeah, tell me if you want one of those. Um, I'm gonna put that away later. Um, this is just an empty box book. It has all the letters me and my husband exchanged while he was in training. I have The Art of War. This is also another really beautiful edition. It's silk and it's illustrated. Absolutely gorgeous, love it. Um, and then we have all of my Collins classics. These are, let's see, Charlotte Bront, Jane Eyre, Tale of Two Cities, 39 Steps, Alice Adventures in Wonderland, The Great Gatsby, another edition of Withering Heights. If you don't know, that's one of my favorites. The Jungle Book, The Phantom of Opera, The Prince and the Pauper, The Awakening, I have The Cimmerillion, and this one is just um, Sir Gawain Pearl and the Green Knight. This is actually my husband's edition. I have, oh, I have the gorgeous little editions of the uh, Lord of the Rings. I need to read these. I have To Build a Fire by Jack London. This is the Reader Digest issue. I have Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. We have another box, like I said, it's filled with letters. Riot Baby, love this. Short book, everyone should read it, it's amazing. Um, the Three Musketeers. These covers, I love these covers. Um, I only have a couple of them. My cat shoot on this one, sorry. <laughs> My cat shoot on this one. Um, these are really cool covers. If you ever see these in the bookstore, you should just pick one up and feel it, it's so weird. Um, Les Miserables, and then I have the Brothers Grimm, and the Giver Quartet, which is all, this one is like, has red pages, it has a little ribbon, it's very cute, um, by Lewis Lowry. Okay, the, this is where it starts to get crazy, is this next one, so let me move you further. This is another shelf. I threw all of these books on here and then realized that I like the way it looks. So this is not organized at all. Um, I like the way it looks because it reminds me of like a used bookstore. So this is just kind of like thrown on here. This is a mixture of, oh my gosh, like classics, like short stories, mythologies. Um, oh my gosh, what else? Like war stories, dystopian novels, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna go through it real quick. I've got, the Red Badge of Courage. We have Johnny Got His Gun. All Quiet on the Western Front. Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. We have The Mission and Men and Me. The Things They Carried. So this book made it on some of people's like emotional damage reels, the ones that they were like are super emotional. I have never read this. I read a short story out of this, but I have not actually read this, or like a snippet out of this, but I have not actually read this, so I might be on my TBR here soon. Um, Catch 22, Lone Survivor, Gray is the Color of Hope. So this is about a political prisoner in the, U in the USSR. It is definitely a nonfiction book, right? Yeah, this is a translated work, and it is a memoir of this beautiful lady right here. She was put into political prison, in, during the USSR or in the USSR. I can't remember what year she was there. This is just about her journey in there and it is absolutely beautiful. The Good Earth, The Tattooist of Auschwitz, Mere Christianity, Number of the Stars, Things Fall Apart, um, Secret Life of Bees, On the Road, Death a Life, which I literally just bought just because of the irony. Uh, the Quest of the Holy Grail, The Catcher in the Rye, N Night. So this is a fiction book about the Holocaust. The author was in Auschwitz. I stole this from my roommate in college and I never gave it back. I am that person. Please don't lend me any books. I'm awful and horrible and I'm the worst person ever, sorry. Uh, Fahrenheit 451. The Grapes of Wrath, which I got from an English teacher and never gave back because I forgot. Uh, Paradise Lost, The Romance of Tristan, which I, when I bought this, I thought it was going to be in French and it is not, so I actually never read it. Uh, Great American Short Stories, The Giver, my original copy, which once again was from a, from a teacher. This one was, I forget when I read this, but right here, cool. 
never ever ever gonna give this away because this is my original copy lord of the flies edith milton um mythology this is my favorite cover this is like really cool graphic i don't i wish you could see like the colors a little bit better but my camera is not good um my favorite cover of this of course okay moving on brave new world scythe the book to beloved um tati ching i actually read this it was really good the prince read this one as well just as good romeo and juliet we have all read this we all know what this is about i am the messenger which i was not impressed with i'm not gonna lie diary of an oxygen thief which i also was not impressed with i have i don't want to say this wrong but i think it's a Bol Bolzac and the little Chinese seamstress. This was incredibly sad and I loved it a lot. Post Office of Mice and Men. Hamlet. I love this cover because I love these colors and this font. Like I just love everything about this. Um, and then I have Notre Dame of Paris. And then my two favorite books I read in high school and our discussion about was Beowulf and Grendel. Love these. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the lower shelf. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but this is my Warhammer 40K <laughs> bookshelf. Um, if you know anything about 40K or Warhammer, you know I can sit here all day and talk about each of these books, but I shall not. Um, if you are a Warhammer 40K fan, comment below, because I need more of those. Anyways, here's that shelf. Ta-da! Okay, we are standing up again, which I don't know is a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, this is my favorite shelf. These are all my favorite books, plus some vampire books. So, like I said, I do have some Warhammer books. These ones are the vampire fantasy ones. I have uh, the, Var Car the Von Karstein's trilogy, Vampire Wars, and Ulrika the Vampire. Highly recommend if you just like vampires, if you don't even know how to have to know about Warhammer, to love these ones. Um, my favorite vampires of all time. Okay, then we have um, Jake Kristoff, Empire of the Vampire. Um, highlighter marks, courtesy of my son. We have three editions of Bram Stoker's Dracula. We have the Barnes and Nobles edition. We have the Paper Mill Press edition. You see that? And we have, I don't know which one is this. I think this is just the Barnes and Noble edition of it. Then we have Frankenstein. Actually, before we get on to that, I need to do a reread of Dracula. I think we're gonna do it in October. But then we have Frankenstein, the picture of Dorian Gray. This is the Barnes and Nobles edition. This is the Paper Mill edition. Love, love, love. Um, East of Eden. So this is the first edition I ever read. I don't know how old this is, but it's definitely an older edition. Um, absolutely love it so i don't know if you can tell but it's like this red and gray and blue mm, i'm obsessed this is the east of eden edition i am going to annotate this year then we have withering heights this is a another just beautiful edition i don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up but it's like silver on silver i have the book of longing my sumac kid we have more the picture of dorian gray and other works by oscar wilde these are like the Barnes and Nobles ones that they make. I have a collection of Jules Verne's. I love this cover. We have Sense and Sensibility. I'm sorry, I say Sense and Sensibility. This is a collection of Jane Austen. We have The Iliad and The Odyssey by Homer. Love this cover, it's amazing. Okay, and then the last two here, which you can't see, I'm gonna move you back. The last two here are by Frank Warren. These are the Post Secret books. Um, this is a compilation of his website. So if you go to postsecret.com, I don't know if it's still running or not, but it's a whole social project. I can talk more about it later, but I did go ahead and buy the books from those. Now we're going to move on to the next shelf. I'm going to move you down. Okay. So this shelf is another purely rainbow shelf. This is the um, shorter books. So the bigger books are here. The shorter ones are here. Um... 
yeah, we'll just get started. So this is a binder. It is a bind up of all the short stories I love and the poems that I love. Um, I just print them out and put them in there. Um, I have Dig by S. King here. Over Rising, I need to finish this series. The Book Thief, of course. I have The Fault in Our Stars. Middle Game, Women Talking, which is incredibly sad. And I need to get off my bookshelf because every time I look at it, it makes me depressed. <laughs> the Snow Child, Eliza and Her Monsters, Fangirl and Eleanor and Eleanor Park Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I have another edition. I oh know I have my little bear. Um, I have another edition of Withering Heights that I absolutely love. It's just down here because it looks pretty. <laughs> 21 Truths about Love is the next one. Is this light blue? I literally only keep it because it's this pretty light blue. Um Flame Fall by Rosaria Munda. So this is a very underrated YA fantasy. The first of it is called Fireborn. Things Not Seen. I have not read this book since I was a child, but I need to reread it. Um, Crown of Thunder and Beasts Made of Night. This is an same author as the one who wrote Riot Baby. He did a interview with V.E. Schwab way back when, and I loved the interview, so I went ahead and read these. If you are a fan of anime, you need to read these because these read like watching anime. The author himself is a big fan of anime, so like there's fight scenes in this, there's creatures in this, and they all remind me of an anime. In fact, good idea for somebody to make an anime out of these books. Um, Wilder Girls, and my journal from last year. I move my cute little piggy bank. Animal Farm, The Birth of Politics, Sing Unburied Sing dry and then carry on which is literally only on the shelf because it is yellow and I don't want to unhaul it because it is yellow but it will be unhauled eventually all right we're moving down so this shelf in the fashion of the other ones is simply just black spines with gold embossing so this has no other sense of organization just purely aesthetic um, I have my collection of Sherlock Holmes chain of gold Twice Told Tales by Nathaniel Nathan Hawthorne. It's a Reader Digest book, just like um, To Build a Fire. The City of Brass, The Host, Native American Legends, Voices of the Wind, The Immortalists, Children of Blood and Bone. I literally, I did not like this book at all, but the cover makes me keep it. And I should be better than that, but I'm not. <laughs> um, the Divine Comedy. We have the Starless Sea, same thing. I absolutely hated, I, I don't wanna say hate, that's such a strong word. Did not like the Starless Sea, but I bought the UK cover because I thought I was going to like it and it was absolutely beautiful. So I won't be unhauling that anytime soon. Um, Boundary Side, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Best Love Fairy Tales by Hans Christian Andersen. And then I have Ghosts of the Shadow Market and Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy simply just because it's pretty. Hopefully you guys can see, but this is uh, Beloved Books from Booktube and Book Talk. And books that look good together. Let's get into it. The Diviners. I have a whole series. Love the cover change. Uh, halfway through, you know, who doesn't? Pinky Cruise. Um, I have A Court of Thorns and Roses. So we have all of those editions. I did go ahead and buy the adult printed ones with the bright neon colors. I don't really regret it. I kind of like them. And then Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor. I wish that these had different covers. In fact, they reprinted them with a beautiful covers because these covers do not do this series justice at all. Um, then we have The Wrath and the Dawn, which I love this cover. And the Rose and the Dagger, love this cover as well. Some of my favorites. From Blood and Ash, Serpent and Dove, Blood and Honey, I Need Gods and Monsters, but I want it in paperback, so I'm holding off. Um, Ninth House, we have the Folk of Air trilogy. I just have the paperbacks, really simple. Was not a fan of this series, so I'm not mad that I didn't spend a bunch of money on the pretty covers. A Court of Silver Flames. I actually put over here away from the series because this one felt like a different series. I don't know if it's going to be. And also because it's hardback. So from now on, I'm going to have to buy the hardbacks. And hopefully it is a whole other series so I can just separate the two. 
um, A Touch of Darkness, and Neon Gods to finish it off. But yes, I actually really like this shelf. Um, moving you down one more time. Okay, so this is the last shelf in my bedroom. Um, this is going to be a mixture, once again, just like the other, the shelf over here. Um, this is like women literature, love stories, and I think that's it. There's a couple of classics in here. I'm just gonna go through them again really quickly. Once I did not organize this just as, just like the other one, I kind of like the used bookstore kind of aesthetic of just a bunch of books thrown into a shelf. I'm not gonna lie. It only was partially because I was lazy. <laughs> um, I have To Kill a Mockingbird, which I love this cover. The Alchemist, um, Flapper, which is a fiction book on the history of flappers. I have 11 Minutes by Polio Colo. I don't hear a lot about this book, but after reading The Alchemist, I went through like a whole, a whole thing where I wanted to read all of his books. And I read this one, it was absolutely gorgeous. It's about a prostitute, as funny as that is. Um, we have The Beautiful and the Damned. I say prostitute, but I guess sex worker is the correct term anymore. Um, the Beautiful and the Damned, love this. The Bell Jar, loved it as well. So we have Faces, I need to reread this one, but I'm gonna reread it after Electric Idol, because I feel like the whole psych, keeping a psych story is one, is a mythology that I really love. And so I'm gonna read this retelling and then the new retelling. And it's gonna be crazy. Um, Water for Elephants, Soul Catcher. This one is heartbreaking as well. It's actually one that I just like randomly picked up at like a five dollar table at Costco and absolutely fell in love. Um, Redeeming Love, A Man Cut O. I have The Arabian Nights and like this really weird cover. Um, it's like Lolita. Um, a couple of women's stories, like A Vindication of Women's Rights by Wollstonecraft. I have Scandalous Women, which is the lives and loves of the history's most notorious women. Loved this book. I have The Wednesday Letters, also heartbreaking. I have The Woman in White. I would reread read this because I loved it so much, but it is so big. Um, the Tree Grows in Brooklyn. The Unhoneymooner is my first Christina Lauren book. Mars of Agesha, which I want to read so after reading this one, a big controversy came out about how she actually really, the main character in this, based off of real life, and she actually didn't want her story to be told in this way. And after this book came out, she decided to do her own. And I really want to read that book as well. Um, but I loved this when it first came out. Outlander. I read, I think the first three of that series. And then we have... I'm just gonna save that one. Uh, normal people hated it. The poetry of Oscar Wilde. Yeah. And then Highland Treasure, a gift from my husband. And we randomly had these three books that I read for college, which was <laughs> Politics by Aristotle, The Athenian Constitution, and The Republic and the Laws by Cicero. I like these covers. I like how they look on the shelf. So, ah. Probably gonna keep those. But, anyways, that's it. Ah.